Hi, I'm Jill. I'm a visual artist and illustrator, and we're here at my studio. We're here at my favorite part, which is my desk, where I will show you my favorite tools and later on talk about my art style. So we have here my first drawing tablet. My dad bought this for me um, when I was in third year in college. Super ROI ko na siya because it's I'm still using it until today and I plan to use it until one, pa, three more years. <laughs> and then we have my favorite postcards, uh, some of my favorite works over here. Also. My favorite plant over here. It's a pothos plant. It's my favorite plant out of all the plants I have here. I don't know, I just like how it trails and it reminds me to just keep going because you know it keeps it keeps growing. Um, and then we also have here some sketchbooks that contains my life story. <laughs> Joke lang. Um, it contains my ideas and my old sketches that, that show how my art style has developed. Um, as well as some of my works also, some of the posters that I've done, which also show how my art style has evolved. We have over here um, a mug that I made for Wabi Sabi. I drink from this every day. Water, coffee, juice, everything. I love it so much. We also have a this calendar from Adarna House. So they feature um, different artists in the different months like that but then for april it's me <laughs> and then we also have my snake plant one of my favorite plants also here and then over here we have a painting by bea batong bakal she's one of my favorite artists local artists who now is based in madrid um, and this painting represents oh. my trip to new york when i took my residency yeah, it just, it just means a lot to me because of the meaning behind it. So I decided to have my own studio um, because from past experience, particularly from my first exhibit, I was working in a tiny space, seeing all like 10 really big canvas works around me with no space to move around just really made me feel so parang nakakasakal siya. But then other than that, I found that it's worth to also have your own studio to separate life and work. If you separate life and work, parang wala, when I get home, I'm excited ulit to go back to the studio to work um, and back and forth. When I describe it in a nutshell, I just say that I like to draw funny looking people in everyday scenes because that's what my art really is about number one people ever since i was a kid it was always about people from stick figures to realistic looking ones it was it was always about people 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 and then everyday scenes to me these um scenes are the ones that we usually take for granted the everyday life or taking a bath um just drinking a cup of coffee waking up things like that to me those are the things that i'm most drawn to and you know, i feel like people really take for granted so with my work i hope to make them more comical and lighthearted, so people could relate to them and hopefully appreciate those moments more so i do that through uh, putting uh, my own humor in them, through siguro exaggerating people's, people's physical characteristics, the colors I use as well. Some people would say that it's comically grotesque, but over the years, I wouldn't say that they look so grotesque um, because I've been starting to draw people that look cute, like this one, this one. We'll talk about how it has changed over the years. But what remains consistent is my message and my artistic voice throughout the years. So this was my first sketchbook. Um, it dates back to 2015, 2016. Um, it was for class, for drawing class, because our prof asked us to uh, draw every day. So, ito <laughs> So I used to draw Metro, um, my book uh, realistic ish. Um, I did use a lot more lines and then very minimal colors, but then I already started to use very like, bright colors, especially in the backgrounds. So this was me. This was me. Yeah, my book weird weird na. 
nagkakaroon ng mga weird weird. And then here, we, you can see that my work has evolved to this. <laughs> so I started painting people in yellow simply because it was my favorite color. But, but then you can already see that, you know, people were starting to look grotesque and they were more dynamic in terms of movement and their features and things like that. Um, and here, um, this was my first ever client work. It was for Adobo Magazine in 2017. Back then, this was such a big deal for me because seeing your work on print felt really satisfying, validating at the same time. And here, my work in terms of style has evolved Again, it was more scary, <laughs> but funny. They look funnier and they were more dynamic as well as compared to the previous ones. And then moving on, um, I started to do more editorial work. So this one was for Young Star um, for Mother's Day. As you can see, the style, it was just a develop development or an evolution. <laughs> Um, from the previous one, so it just got better. I just um, improved on the form and the expressions and the colors. And then here on my website, you can find the my most recent works or the current works that I have that make use of my art style. This is one of my favorite works as well um, that I made. So this was dated 2020. 2020. Um, the title is just enjoy the ride. Uh, so this work is very important to me because I made this after I resigned and decided to do art and illustration full time. So just enjoy the ride. Basically, it means to enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. It's difficult, like I said, because of you do everything yourself, accounting, the contracts, the negotiating, everything else. I used to panic over that and stress about that a lot, but then now. I'm learning to just take everything one step at a time, be more present, just enjoy the ride. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say it was hard. It was just that it came natural. What I said earlier, when my prof required us to draw um, for class, he required us to draw daily. So, sabi niya kahit ano daw i draw namin. So, it came to a point that I was just drawing mga phone chargers, um, mga like bottles of, 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 Paint, things like that, random random stuff. I didn't really see the point of it until yun nga, parang I started to see consistencies in them. And then it was just a matter of finding out which which you want to retain and which one you want to eliminate and then developing from there. So yeah, I wouldn't say it was difficult because it just came natural. Number one. I think this is the most important one. Find your why. Your why is the message that you want to convey with your work. So for me, I feel like artistic style, it, like what you saw in, with my works, it changes over time and that's perfectly okay. But for me, what should remain consistent should be your artistic voice. So that's your message behind your work. And number two, draw every day. Always keep a sketchbook handy. Um, over time, you're going to see consistencies in your drawings, like the form, the colors that you choose, the themes, and all those elements. So what you do from then, you choose the elements that you want to further explore, and that will make your work you. And then number three, don't obsess over finding your artistic style, because it's very important to make work that is fulfilling for you. So just draw every day and eventually the things that you make will come naturally to you. Um, yes, I'm scared, but I think that's why it's important as artists to find ways on how to evolve and improve in your craft. It's also important as artists to, to have a life outside of art to make yourself excited again when you're about to work. It's open to changing. I don't think it's my style forever. As I said, what should remain consistent should be your message, your artistic voice. So, parang example, from this drawing, you can see parang medyo cute cute na siya. As compared to this one, um, I guess it's just me wanting to have another version of my work na parang it would fit other mediums, like kung are, uh, clothes, a pair of shoes, my mom mugs. Uh, I feel like it would be difficult for me to paint them in this way in those kinds of mediums. So I learned how to evolve my drawing. Now you've seen 
my studio and you've also seen how my artistic style has changed over time. So a good takeaway from this would be knowing that artistic style can really change over time but what should remain consistent would be your message, your why behind your works. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, just message me on Instagram and I'd be happy to help you with um, anything with your style, your craft. Um, when you're, if you're going freelancing, I'd be happy to help you. So thank you for watching. Bye!